Good afternoon and welcome to Ask Northumbria on Facebook Live. I'm Rob Carthy, I'm the International Director at Northumbria University and I'll introduce you to my colleagues. Northumbria University is a large modern university up in the centre of Newcastle which is a really vibrant, thriving city, often voted the best city to be a student. And what we want to do today is to give you a little more information about what it's like to study business at Northumbria University because business really is one of those subjects where we have a real global reputation for academic excellence. Uh, and we want to give a chance to answer some questions that we've had in already, tell you some more about the programmes we have and what it's like to be a student here. And we'll also have an opportunity for some questions to come in that we'll also answer. So I'll, I'll pass over to my colleagues to introduce themselves. David? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dr David Hart. I am a Director of Programmes here at Newcastle Business School. Uh, so my main area of teaching is around the marketing area, um, but I've been involved in postgraduate recruitment for a number of years, so I've got a bit of a broad oversight of all the different postgraduate programmes we have to offer. Excellent. And uh, Saket? Uh, hello, hello everyone, I'm Saket Kanchala. I'm coming from India, from south of India, Bangalore. Uh, I'm currently pursuing uh, my Masters in Forensic Accounting. It's a one-year course. So this is a niche course that uh, Northumbria has to offer. Wonderful. Thanks, David. Thanks, Saki. So first question for me is for David. So David, can you just tell us a little more about the range of business courses that we offer here at Northumbria University? Yeah, sure. Um, the first thing we thought about when designing the courses is understanding the potential master students are at different stages of their career development. Um, some people will know exactly what particular area of business they want to go into. Some people might have a little bit more of a general interest in business but not know where to focus as yet. So what we have is a, a sort of portfolio of programmes that are designed to tailor for people who are at those different stages. Um, at one end you have what we would call our general business courses. Um, so for example international business management where the intention is to give a broad feel for the whole range of subjects and disciplines within the business area. So on a degree like that, you can expect to cover everything from finance and strategy through to logistics, HR, those sorts of things. Um, and that can be particularly well suited for people who are maybe perhaps a bit newer to the business, business area, perhaps they've got a different bachelor area of focus. Um, at the other end of the, of the continuum, what you have is more specialist courses that are focused on a particular area of business, a lovely example being Sarkis uh, MSc in Forensic Accounting. Other ones include digital marketing, mm -hmm. uh, international human resource management, um, and, and one or two others as well. And they're designed for individuals who have maybe have a little bit more of a clearer uh, insight on where it is they want their career to go in the future, and they want a master's course that will indicate that level of specialism on their CV. Um, in between those, we have a suite of courses which we refer to as our business whips. Um, and basically they are, to use an Americanized term, a major minor, where you will spend two thirds of your time doing general business, and the remaining one third is picking up a particular subject uh, in a lower level of detail than you would on a focus course. So for example, there is business with uh, business analytics, with marketing, with international management, etc. So the idea is that no matter where a student is, in terms of their career, there should be something there for them. So it sounds like a very broad range of, of an offer within the business school, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. And obviously, part of the attraction to come in to study here in the UK at Newcastle Business School is that breadth and those, those speciality courses, but what else can students get around that, that degree that will help them in terms of their career going forward? What are the options that we have open to students? Okay. Well, I mean, in terms of the degree structures, one of the um, what we have is some two-year variants of mm -hmm. our courses. So um, the vast majority of our courses are available in what we call a standard one-year format, whereby students will study here for two semesters, and then in their final, uh, just after that, they will then undertake a dissertation, or in some cases, in some cases, a piece of consultancy work with their local business. Um, however, if students want to stay with us for a bit longer, most of our courses are also available on two-year routes. One of them is called advanced practice, and one of them is called study abroad. Mm -hmm. And what they allow the students to do is develop further skills and experiences in a particular area that's of interest to them. So if they were to go down the advanced practice route, you could potentially look to do an in internship or an additional piece of consultancy as part of your degree. And that would stretch your master's over two calendar years instead of the one. Um, if you were to do the study abroad one, as the name suggests, that involves going to one of our many partner institutions across the world to study subjects relative relevant to your master's degree at another institution. So the idea is that some people may wish to spend that little bit longer with us because they want to develop certain skills, etc. And hopefully we've got those variants that allow them to do that. Okay, 
So thank you very much. I guess it's worth emphasising that for the uh, the internship route, whilst that's quite an attractive route, we can't guarantee placement in that, and so we have to make sure we manage expectations accordingly through that. Absolutely. Um, it would be wonderful if every student did yeah. get that sort of experience, um, but obviously it is up to the student to, yeah. to search out those particular opportunities, yeah. Yeah. to apply, etc. What we do have is tutors here who have an open door policy, yeah. so if you want to come and talk to us about your plans and yeah. we can advise you on how to sculpt your CV, etc., we're happy to yeah. do that. Our career service do that sort of thing as well. Wonderful. Thank you. So again, David, question for you. Why should students choose to study at Newcastle Business School? Well, I think we've touched on the first thing is in terms of the, the, the portfolio of courses we've got, and hopefully that gives people the feeling that there is something right for them. Um, what we have is a growing reputation for excellence in both our teaching and learning and our research. Um, so a couple of years ago, we won the Times Higher Award for Best Business School in the UK which was a very prestigious award and one we're very, very proud of. Mm -hmm. And that was awarded based on a number of things. It was based on the quality of teaching. It was based on the impact our research was having in the wider business world. It was also based on our networks, not just with international universities, but with employers across the world. And it means that the courses we're teaching are reflective of what businesses think are important for graduates in the modern marketplace. Um, I think that beyond that, I'm sure that will have some other ideas from a student perspective, but Newcastle is a great city to be in for students. Mm -hmm. We have wonderful um, infrastructure here, there's good facilities, yeah. our campus is purpose built, and generally, in my experience, there's always just a really nice atmosphere on campus, and I don't think you can put enough emphasis on that. Yeah. When you're travelling across the world potentially to study, it's got to feel right, you've got to feel at home there, mm -hmm. and I think that Newcastle as a city allows that. Yeah. Wonderful, sounds good. And uh, just a quick welcome to anybody just joining us. This is the Ask Me Fundraiser Facebook session where we're focusing around uh, the discipline of business. So moving on, uh, Saket, the question for you, from a student's perspective, why do you think international students should choose Northumbria as a university okay. to study at? So firstly, adding to what David said, I think like infrastructure is a very important thing. Like when, when I came into Northumbria first, the infrastructure was like, uh, it was so good, like there's so much to offer, like say the sports central to like the students union to all the business school buildings, everything. There's so much infrastructure like within the university that it, it's a home, it's a town in itself. Like you could, there's a lot of things to offer. And then Newcastle as a city is probably the most vibrant city in UK. Uh, in the last few months of UK, uh, staying in UK, I've been traveling to a lot of cities, but uh, uh, Newcastle is vibrant, like there's students everywhere. And like probably students might be uh, worried about like going out in the night, it might not be safe and stuff like that. Uh, I came in uh, from traveling, I came in at four in the morning and I could see, uh, see students everywhere. It's probably one very vibrant city. And then like uh, the students union has so many societies uh, mm -hmm. that uh, people could join in clubs and societies. For example, I came in, joined in the uh, Northumbria Hindu society. Mm -hmm. Easy to fit in, feels home. Like there's societies for like uh, say uh, Caribbean uh, group or like say Southeast Asians anywhere so they have different groups also like they have uh, uh, clubs for like different uh, you know, interests of people like say I'm a very big Potterhead so like I came in I joined the Harry Potter Society this is a society for Game of Thrones like there's a lot of things to do and like uh, in terms of affordability I think Newcastle is really nice because uh, compared to the other cities uh, it's very affordable student <coughs> accommodations and like the cost of living, everything is co comparatively, it's better for students, it's cheaper and like you could do part times and like it's very easy to get part times and like you can make your uh, daily living easier in okay. your castle. So. so as an international student yourself, how did you feel before you moved to the UK? Uh, so before moving to UK, like firstly, UK was a dream destination to come for me, like the amount of travel options that people don't really know like it's easy to travel here, but it is very, very easy to travel here, like there's a lot of options and and another thing about UK is uh, probably in this part of the uh, world, like it's UK is one of the better options for business studies. Mm -hmm. So in, in terms of anything related to business, uh, this is much better option because for me, especially like uh, doing a business course, it was important to have a professional degree, like say the ACCA, CIMA or stuff like that. Because in the business industry, I worked in KPMG. So they want more of professional experience. So, and UK has a lot of pro, uh, accredited uh, courses mm -hmm. and uh, especially like with universities such as this to provide such niche courses and stuff like that uh, it's very important for students to choose what course they want to and like so before coming to the UK uh, I decided like exactly what I want to pursue uh, whether it has the accreditation and like 
it it just fits in the right place and like there's a lot of options like there are so many students and another thing was uh, i was worried about the education system like country to country it's a different education system so in uk it's more about uh, your research uh, and at a master's level they expect you to do your own work and like you are supposed to read it's no more of the spoon feeding uh, system because i come from india where it's more of examinations but here it's more of assignments you learn to write a report or you learn to cite and it's uh, it becomes more professional like it just falls in place even for the undergraduates i have a, a couple of friends who are doing the undergraduates so they they all fall in that path where they the flow is right and it's more practical in nature so that way it is perfect thank you sir thank you if i may just from an academic point of view um, a major part of all of our degrees is a skill set yeah. and um, don't get me wrong in some cases examinations are the right way to assess a person's knowledge and skills but if we're trying to prepare people for the marketplace of postgraduate jobs then we want them to be able to write professional yes. reports to present clearly yes. and maybe even use more sort of modern ways of getting their ideas across using vlogs using prezies and all of those sorts of things yeah. even using relevant pieces of software like the business simulation that i'm yes. sure you've had a part oh. of so uh, so that that practical element of it is really important to us because in many ways it's those skills that actually set people up for the jobs they want okay. that sounds good so from a structural point of view, David, how does the term how does the term dates work here okay. in Northumbria? Okay. Um, well, we welcome our students here normally around mid to late September, where we give a full induction. Yeah. Um, we realise, as has been touched on, there's an awful lot of adaptation to be yeah. done there, but it's our job to make sure you understand how the university works, how your education will be structured, but also how to live and to enjoy being in the UK and the yes. environment that you're coming into. Um, the first semester runs from then until just short of Christmas, yep. and then just after the Christmas break, um, we have a short assessment period where students may be submitting reports, etc., for the modules they study beforehand. Normally, then about late January, the second semester starts, and that normally kicks in um, through till about the May period, where there is then assessments. Yep. Um, the structure then changes a little bit. If, if you're on a one-year course like Sargeth is here, then you will probably go straight on to doing your dissertation and your or your consultancy through to the September. Yeah. And the benefit of that is that you effectively complete your masters in one calendar year yeah. from September to September. If you go on to the two year variants we mentioned before, yeah. then you would go away for the summer and then come back in September to go again. Yeah. And that's the same for the undergraduate programmes yes. as well. Yeah. You would finish May, June and then you have the summer and then come back to the start in September. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And so Sarkat, just touching on that, in terms of that support that the university provides around when you arrive, helping you settle in. How did you feel supported by so Northumbria? In terms of support, I think like especially when uh, a student is coming into a new country, hands down, Northumbria has done like the best job because uh, before coming in, there were a lot of questions like our parents were like, "How are you going to reach there? Like, how are you going to fit into the new place?" Uh, so Northumbria has this uh, special service called the meet and greet service. So as you arrive at the Newcastle Airport, yeah. there's a team waiting for you. There's Everything is uh, sorted out for you. They've got your SIM cards. They've got all the initial things that has to be done. Also, like they give you a ride home, uh, and like there's a person along with you. They they just help you understand the city. So in that terms, I think Northumbria has done a brilliant job. Uh, also, in terms of student support, I would say like th they've got a lot of options, especially like. A lot of students, uh, international students, when they come in, they look at employability, and it is very important for like st for students pursuing like undergraduate or postgraduate courses that to understand what is uh, their situation in the market. So, in terms of that, if you want to improve your CV, if you want to improve your interview skills, if you want to uh, improve for your psychometric test, uh, Northumbria has got a proper workshop where like they help me out. Uh, in my case, they help me out really well. Like I, I could build a very good resume and cover letter. Uh, I've also got placed on an internship. So all I would say is like, just, well, just, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so all I would say is like, just start your work early, go, go and take all the support. There is opportunity yeah. available and go seek it. Like, just don't leave it. Take all the help that is required. They're ready to help with open hands. Yeah. So just take the help, apply before, and like, you will just fall in the right place. And even the tutors, like our module tutors and everyone, they're very helpful. In the, in the beginning, it was very difficult for me to write a report because we don't do the citation, like APS style citation. Yeah. But there were so many workshops that help you out on like how to prepare, say, in terms of dissertation. There's so many workshops that are happening, like uh, how do you write a dissertation? What's the uh, uh, schedule that you should have? How do you go about it? So in terms of support, it's just brilliant. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.
I think that's really good to hear because I know as a university we pride ourselves on bringing students in and giving them a really warm welcome but I think thinking about the practical elements to that so if you're not from the UK or if you're not from Newcastle what do you need to know about living in the UK how do you open a bank account how do you register with a doctor those practical things you need to learn uh, to start off with and then if you're coming into the UK as a new learning environment what are those specialities that we have around our citations and, and referencing how to make sure that you can succeed academically yes. as well as socially so they're, they're things that we take um, as, as really very important parts of welcoming our, our students to the UK so I'm glad to hear that you've really really got involved in that yeah. um, so we've had a question in here from uh, from one of the audience around scholarships and I think it's worth saying that Northumbria University does offer a, a wide range of scholarships to our international students our main one is we have an academic scholarship of two and a half thousand pounds for outstanding students that acts as a discount from the headline fee. We also have an early payment discount for students who pay their deposit by a certain date. All of those things are communicated out through the offer letter and these are discounts that are made automatically so students don't need to apply on top of their initial application to the program so that happens within our applicant services team they will manage that so uh, we do have those scholarships available they are quite generous the best way to find out more is to get an application in, so that would be, be my recommendation. And another question that's come in, I think is one for you David, which is about the MBA. And th does Northumbria have the MBA programme? Yeah, um, only in the last year, 18 months or so, what yeah. we've done is we've fully redeveloped the MBA. Okay. Um, the business school's done really well in the last year or so to recruit in a large number of new professors mm -hmm. who've come from a range of different institutions, cover different business functions and backgrounds and what we've done is we've put them at the very centre of the MBA mm -hmm. in terms of the design and the delivery. Yeah. So our MBA students can expect to be taught by professors who've got obviously strong academic experience mm -hmm. but they've also been able to evidence impact so maybe they're involved in consultancy mm -hmm. or other forms of outreach with businesses. Yeah. Okay. And so that as a, as a course is really appealing to people who have a few years of relevant management experience and are looking for that next step on the career ladder if you want. And I know I've, I've seen a few of these groups as they come in for their study breaks, etc. and their discussions are really interesting. Okay, yeah. excellent, that sounds good. Um, just a quick welcome to anybody that's just joined us. This is the Ask Northumbria Facebook Live session where we're talking today about students that are interested in studying business. And I think a question uh, for you, Saka, just, I'm really interested to hear more about your internship. Tell me about how you how you secured that and, and, and what that process looks like. So even before the internship, actually it was a dream for me to work in London ever since. Mm -hmm. So uh, what happened was uh, I started uh, developing my LinkedIn page. It's very important for okay. business students yeah. to have a, a, your LinkedIn page in mm -hmm. full terms. Uh, and then I started applying just before December. Okay. So the key is apply before December, say I'm doing a one year course, apply before, keep everything in place, take the support required, and then uh, uh, eventually things will fall in place. So that's how it happened. So I've applied before, and then like I had my LinkedIn profile, and also I was pursuing this uh, professional course called ACCA. So that helped me uh, very much. And with uh, forensic accounting being a very niche course, so it's probably one of the most evolving things right now in the business uh, industry. So with the help of provided by my tutors, like you know, getting the knowledge of these niche uh, skill set. Uh, I was I able to apply for such kind of jobs. So these uh, these business courses gives you uh, the criteria for applying such uh, specific courses. So then I have applied for the internship, and then they called me to London, and uh, they took an interview and like uh, some basic tasks, and then I got placed on the internship. So I could I, I'll be traveling to London every week right now, like. Uh, weekly to uh, two days uh, and it's uh, people think it's too difficult to travel from this part to the other part but by train it's just three hours so mm -hmm. I can go there do my uh, internship get back uh, continue my dissertation so it just goes hand in hand. Fantastic. Well, that sounds really good I think uh, yes, it's, yeah, really inspirational that you <laughs> put that work in and secured something yeah. you're very very keen on, on doing. And uh, another question for you David which yeah. is around PhD opportunities. What kind of PhD opportunities exist within the faculty and within the university to allow students to, you know, to, to take that next step on in their studies if they wish yeah. to. 
Um, well, again, almost linked to the amount of new professors we've been bringing in recently and the, the sort of growth in research output and impact that we've had, um, there is now a lot more emphasis on building our doctoral community. Um, so if anyone was interested in that, basically there's two main pathways to follow in the business area. Um, the first is the slightly more traditionally, traditional PhD program. Um, the other one is referred to as our DBA, which stands for a Doctorate of Business Administration. That one is a little bit different because the main outputs of that piece of work are meant to be primarily practical in nature. Yeah. So whereas a PhD is focusing mainly on theoretical contributions to knowledge in a new area, um, a DBA is more focusing on well, what does that mean for business? How can that make a business perform better or change its procedures, etc. Both of them follow relatively similar timelines and structures, but the DBA course actually has um, more of a taught element to it. There's a little bit more teaching done there about sort of business principles and research methods, etc. Um, so what I would recommend if anyone was interested in doctoral study is first of all have a look on the website, yeah. have a look at the staff profile, yeah. find a little bit about the sort of areas that people are specialising in. So someone like yourself, if you were going down the doctoral line, you'd be looking for staff who have got expertise in the areas that you're, you've been talking about forensic accounting and see if you can find a nice match between areas that interest you and things that our supervisors are currently working on yeah. and that can be the start of a nice conversation. I would always say to a prospective student, if you're interested in work with an academic, mm -hmm. you drop them an email, go direct to them, yeah. have a conversation. Okay. You'll just get honest advice yeah. and if we can work together then great. Yeah. And the university does have quite a number of um, sort of scholarships and, and, and things available, yeah. normally about November or December every academic year, so there is support in place yeah. to help people through that process. Wonderful. No, that sounds really good. Thank you for that, David. So, just a quick check with my colleagues to see if we have any questions from the audience on Facebook. In which case, thanks very much for watching. Um, you can leave questions in the comments section if you're watching live and we'll take up uh, the opportunity to answer them after the broadcast. So, thank you very much.